Okay, so the, the, the other paradigm that is not positivism we can be seen as on the other extreme, like if we have uh, positivism here, interpretivism is the other one. So as you can notice from the word, uh, this, this paradigm focuses more on interpretations. And the idea is that reality is not really there. It's not really something that existed before humans. It's something that is shaped through perceptions like if it's it, in the most extreme version of interpretivism is that uh, if you that you build the reality with your perception so if you don't per perceive something it doesn't exist at some degree at least in your reality that's the most extreme version of interpretivism uh, I, I will also talk about these extremes and how you can be in a middle point or something like that but the, the, the idea is that reality is not just there and we want to discover it, it's, it, that reality is built through perceptions. So because of that, the focus of the interpretivism paradigm is not to discover things, but to interpret things, to understand things. So in because of that, the context and the researcher are very important in this, con, in this research. I will, I will give more details about this later. And some of the methods that we use in here are not really on uh, objective data, something that we criticized in here, like something, sometimes it's difficult to objectify an emotion, for example, or, or a social process. But in here, we don't have that problem because we are not going to objectively quantify a feeling or a process or a conversation, for example. Instead of that, we are going to interpret the data and um, it doesn't mean that it's less scientific, not at all. It's not, it doesn't mean that it's less strict uh, uh, scientifically. It's just a different approach. We focus more on the interpretation rather than in finding something totally objective as in the positivism paradigm. So I think in, in this comparison, maybe you can find, you, you can see kind of the spectrum because it's actually a spectrum. It's not like you pick this positivism or you pick interpretivism. It's not like that, it's not a football match. You can situate your research uh, in the middle, it's possible. And we are going to talk about that later. You can, but sometimes it's easier to pick up one side, <laughs> but not the extreme version, you can pick up you can move a little bit to the interpretivism side or a little bit to the positivism side. We're, we're going to talk about that. But the very, very important thing, and this is kind of the most important takeaway that you should learn from this lecture is that you need to be consistent. If you decide, if you have the spectrum here and you decide to be here, for example, like on the positivism side for your research, everything has to be coherent. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, but that's the most important thing to make your research coherent because the problem is that sometimes we say, okay, reality, uh, I want to discover something. Uh, so you assume that reality is objective, but my research method uh, wants to capture interpretations and the context. So then it doesn't make sense, right? Because if you already, want to do something very objectively, why would you care about interpretations? It's kind of incoherent. So that's what you want to avoid. But let me explain really quick this table. So in one side, you have positivism paradigm that focus, that uh, assumes that reality simply exists. And this is kind of the most uh, extreme version of positivism to like everything is set. And if, if we disappear, it will continue exactly as it is right now. Nothing will change. Reality is reality, and it will stay like that. The, this kind of positivism thing is also related with deeper things like, or like how we envision things and like maybe even religion, like religion is a bit positivist because it says that everything is there and we are just here for a second and what we interpret don't, doesn't really matter. So maybe you feel more like this is true, but again, it's not like a change in your in your in how you see life is more about the research it's only about the research is your phenomenon related to this like do you do you assume that what you want to study is that is something that already exists or do you want to study something that is built through perceptions through human interaction to the social interaction because if one if what you want to study something that is that doesn't exist 
out of nowhere, then you should pick up something related to interpretivism. So for example, like a, like a mental process, a cognitive process, emotions, uh, a social process, uh, decision-making processes, things like that are more related to interpretivism. Then the objective is to discover reality. And the objective of interpretivism is, is to interpret those perceptions. So again, what is your objective? Do you want to discover reality, something that we don't know that is there, but we don't know? Do, is that your objective? Or is your objective to interpret perceptions of a process or something like that? Then later, uh, research, the, the, the researcher should stay, uh, there is a type, the researcher should stay as far as possible to not interfere with the discovery because you want to be as objective as possible. So you want to start far from your from your experiments, far from your data, because you don't you don't want to intervene. And in interpretivism, it's totally the opposite. If you want to understand a social process, what 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 you interpret and what you think is also very important. So if you think that there's something going on in there you should use that um, intuition to change a little bit more or to guide your case because it's very important what you think also. So in, in interpretivism, you have to be close. Then in positivism, we use quantitative methods, very objective things, numbers. And in interpretivism, we use qualitative methods, not that objective and not that uh, numerical. And we're going to talk about methods in a second. And then uh, we usually use positivism in natural sciences like math, chemistry, physics, and we use interpretivism in sociology, psychology, and other social sciences. The thing is that in business administration, you are kind of in between <laughs> because there, you can use positivism without any problem if you focus more on economic theories, or you can use interpretivism if you focus on sociology, psychology theories, or you can maybe kind of combine something. It's a challenge to combine, but you can still do it. So I hope with this table, you can more or less uh, notice the differences. I think it's easier to study one paradigm if you know the other. And then uh, the, the, my final message again is that don't pick up one side, like don't think that you should always be positivist or you should always be interpretivist. It depends on what you want to study. Sometimes you want to study something that you want to discover sometimes you want to study how a social process happens and then you move to the other no problem at all and, and in terms of your thesis uh, it depends on what do you want to do but the idea is that you should stay coherent if you decide to go for this stay like this because that's a kind of a big problem sometimes that that the student starts in here and then later he or she moves to something like this and then something like this again. So it's like, what are you doing? It's very incoherent. The importance is to pick up something based on your research topic or your research plan and then be coherent. So with this, I, I'm, I think I'm finishing this video and the next one, I will also guide you through other important concepts.